back to my channel. I'm back again with another video. If you're watching this video, I presume that you are taking the MCAT, or you plan on taking it, you're studying for it, you might take it, you don't know, you're on the fence, blah blah blah. Well, you came to the right place because today I'm going to be talking about the MCAT, mainly how I'm studying for the MCAT. So just as a disclaimer, I haven't taken the MCAT yet and I will be taking it on August 24th. But before I get into talking about how I'm studying for the MCAT, I wanted to do like a brief overview of what the MCAT looks like. The AAMC recommends that you have about three months of studying with 300 hours worth of studying. Personally, I don't clock my hours just because it really all depends on how much I'm learning and if I'm comfortable with the material or not. If I'm not comfortable, obviously I need more hours. So I guess now I'll just kind of give you a timeline of what my studying is looking like. I started studying June 1st and I will stop studying on August 22nd because I'm not going to study the day before the exam and then the 24th I'll be taking the exam. For the month of June, I studied 10 to 12 hours each day and I didn't take a single day off. But that was because I just wanted to get a good foundation of all the material that's going to be or that could be presented on the exam. And so I read through all the Kaplan books that I had purchased, there are seven of them, and I took really great notes on the books. I bought two of the three subject notebooks. The seventh book was The Critical Analysis and Reasoning. I found that just reading that book was substantial enough to um, get down the material because it's just about reading and how to answer the questions. And I took notes on all the other books. For the month of July, I did take a step back and I'm only studying five to eight hours a day just because I burned out in June to be honest like my neck was hurting my head was hurting my eyes like I could see the optic discs in my eyes where we have the blind spot that says something I did take a step back which I don't mind because I'm still getting a lot of information in and I'm getting a lot down but through the first half of July I went through the books a second time but quicker did more of the practice problems that were associated with each chapter which I didn't do the first time so this was more of the integrated practice and seeing if I could apply the material in a question format. Then midway through July, I started my Kaplan prep course and it's an in-person course and we meet three times a week for three hours each session and basically just dive into the high yield material that will be on the exam and learn how to take the exam and the questions and knowing how to recognize questions and eliminate answers and blah 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 blah. I plan on doing a whole separate video about a review of the Kaplan course. If you're, if you're thinking about taking a prep course, just think of it as an investment in your future because I don't know about you, but I do not plan on taking the MCAT two times. I'm only going to take it once, I'm going to do great on the first time and that's that. Once August starts, I will be studying probably like eight hours a day and it'll be more integrated practice. I will be doing more of the full length exams. So that'll be through the 22nd of August. And I do advise doing a practice test within the first few weeks of studying just to really gauge where you're at. So I took a practice test in June and I did two full length exams in July and I have significantly improved from my initial score which is what I obviously expect. Now for August, I will be taking a practice exam at least one time a week just to build up my endurance, you know, that it takes to take this test. That is what my timeline looks like for studying and now I'll talk about the tools that I find useful while I'm studying. So as I said, taking notes is really important and it's, I don't know why you wouldn't take notes on the books, but having the books, taking notes on the books, really important. You should do it. While taking notes, I do advise making flashcards. I found flashcards most useful for organic chemistry reactions just because you will see reactions and sometimes mechanisms on the exam and reagents especially and seeing the reactant and knowing what the product will look like really quickly will save you a lot of time on test day. Next, I have this huge calendar in my room. It's a whiteboard and the format is like the month and it has all the days of the month obviously and I just fill in you know what I'm doing that day whether it is related to studying whether it's the gym or work or volunteering or whatever I just list it all out just so I can see what my day what my week is gonna look like and 
Also, it's a good reminder of what you should be doing and what either you have done or have not done. Mm, let's see, sorry, I have this little notebook. <laughs> oh, coffee, coffee. My first and foremost thing that you and I both need to have while studying for the MCAT is, is coffee and water. You need water, obviously, because it's just the most important thing you can put in your body, and coffee is like the second most important thing to put in your body, to be, to be quite frank. Other than that, I think that's about it. Um, I just wanted to kind of keep this video short because I know these videos can be really, really long. So I hope I got to the point for you and gave you kind of an insight of what studying for the MCAT looks like. So once I do take the MCAT, I will let you guys know how I do. So I guess I'll just wrap it up and thank you for watching. If you are going to take your MCAT soon, I wish you the best of luck. And if you're studying for the MCAT right now, I wish you also the best of luck. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!